Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today, well, before we get into the video, I am sorry that I sound a little odd. I thought my sinuses were just flaring up because they always do when the weather changes, but no. I actually have the flu, so if I sound a little weird over the next couple of days, I I'm sorry. It, it is what it is. But anyway, today we are talking about the newest addition, well, one of the newest additions to the super ship family, and that is the German super cruiser, the Klauswitz, which in my opinion is actually how more super ships should be designed like. We're going to go through that in today's video, but before, guys, if you don't mind, drop a like and leave a comment down below. Appeasing the YouTube algorithm gods is like 80%, 85% of YouTube nowadays, so it likes seeing comments and likes on videos, so if you don't mind doing that so this video gets pushed out to more and more viewers, I would be quite thankful. But anyway, going on into the Klaus Fitz. So if you look at her on screen, You'd be forgiven for thinking she's literally just a bigger Hindenburg, and actually you shouldn't be forgiven because it, she is. It's literally just a bigger Hindenburg with slightly bigger guns, and a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses that the Hindenburg has on her. Now, of course, super ships are a controversial topic. Um, my take on them is that they're way too gimmicky. They shouldn't really be in the game. I think it's very strange how... They went from just having them in a temporary game mode to literally shoving them in the game faster than they did submarines. Keep that in mind. Submarines were in testing for like a year, two years just about, and they went through so many changes, so many careful tweaks and things, and there's still problems with them today. But we got these ships just shoved in the game, I think, well within a year about. So, yeah, that is... I don't like them. But if we're going to keep seeing them in-game, they need to be more like the Klaus Fitz. Now, the Klaus Fitz, of course, she's a non-historical ship. This is something we're getting pretty much completely made up on their own. So let's go through her, her stats and features, shall we? So, one thing that you probably noticed about her and the Hindenburg, they both have 12 guns. And the Klaus Fitz has 210 millimeter guns, which is a step up from the Hindenburg, but... Her DPM is actually a tiny, eensy wincy tiny bit lower than the Hindenburg because of her base reload time. Now, I have the reload module on my Klauswitz, and the reload's down to 9.2. Hindenburg, if you build into it all the way, you can get it down to um, 8. Let me, let me double check here in, in port while I got that up. I believe it's like 8 and change on the Hindenburg. Yeah, 8.6 seconds. So, technically, yes, the DPM is a little bit lower than Hindenburg. But, I mean, with the upgrade you get in the guns in terms of the a a AP and HE punch, because, again, they're a little bit bigger caliber guns, but they are, in my opinion, it's non-noticeable. It's been pretty easy to do good, consistent damage with these guns. So, you get 9.2 se uh, second reload time with the module on these 210mm guns. Now, these guns do get out to 185 kilometers, which, uh, again, a little bit longer than the Hindenburg. Uh, the HE... It's the German HE. You have good HE pins at the cost of the Alpha. The HE does a maximum Alpha, so again, this is like if it was to somehow set it on something, of 2,950. Again, pretty anemic. They have a 16% chance of causing a fire on target per shell, but they can pin 53 millimeters of armor. They come with the tubes at 925 meters a second. And the AP does a maximum damage of 6,510, and those two come out the tubes at 925 meters a second. So, again, it's Hindenburg, but a little bit better. Now, um, with the HE, of course, again, it's like Hindenburg, so uh, the way you normally deal with a ship with HE is just death by 10 million paper cuts. Because the lower HE Alpha, again, you're not going to be chucking the crap out of them like you would with British HE or anything like that, so you're more or less just dumping shells on the target and thankfully again she does have a pretty nice uh reload time with the module so that's not really hard to do if someone's to sit there and just eat all that hg you're throwing at them you will eventually get them down it might take a while but you will get them there eventually in terms of her fire starting chance um from my experience it's been pretty decent in every game but the one in the background right here and this was the um not the best game that I had, but I think it does a pretty good job of showing you the uh, strengths and weaknesses of the Klaus Fitz, because you can see that 
the HE is, well, you have good reload time and uh, nice pins. When you're forced to use it, it is a pretty lackluster. But again, that's not a carryover from the Hindenburg. The AP, on the other hand, just like the Hindenburg, the AP hits nice and hard. And if you got something that shows you broadside from, well, really anything from about 13 kilometers in, if they show you broadsides pushing over to your AP, you will chunk the living crap out of that ship. If it's the uh, battleships that show you broadsides, push over to a AP, aim for the upper belt, and you'll chunk them for like 15, 20k again, depending upon what ship it is. They're nice and punchy, and at longer ranges when uh, more lightly armored targets like light cruisers or like American cruisers and things like that, when they show you broadside, swap one over to AP, you'll chunk for like 5 to 6k, just about again, and this is every 9 seconds. So that's pretty nice, and I skipped over the armor at the beginning for some reason, but her armor layout, um, it's pretty much, again, Hindenburg. Like, it is pretty darn similar to the Hindenburg. She's got that 27mm um, wraparound belt at the front of her. And then the uh, bow above that is also 27mm. Uh, Looks like she has that 40mm wraparound belt. Well, almost wraparound belt, I should say. Then you have that 130mm casemate armor. And then once you take the torpedo protection away, you see her armor belt continues along there behind her her um, torpedo protection, and her citadel is just below the waterline as well, behind a nice 130 millimeter slat of turtleback armor. So it's pretty similar to the Hindenburg, again, what a big surprise, but not really a huge step up when you compare it to like the Conde and the Annapolis from the Henri IV and the uh, Des Moines respectively. So yeah, anyway. So, moving on to her torpedoes now. She gets standard German torps, 4x5, 533, 6-second reload time. I'm sorry, 6-second reload time, I wish. 6-second 180 time, 112-second reload time. Again, normal German torps. Again, literally what you get on the Hindenburg here. 6-kilometer range, 13,700. 64 knots, 1.3-kilometer detection range. Again, the torpedoes that the Germans just bolt to everything starting from Tier 8 and... Up. And also, just like other German torpedoes, these, tor these torpedoes are made out of paper mache. So if anything sneezes on them, it, they're done. That's that's just how it is. Gotta lo love German torps. They armored the crap out of the secondaries of the, of the Germans, but I guess they just forgot to armor the torpedoes. AA is actually not bad. It's actually fairly decent. You do have DFAA if you want to take it. You get 12 by 2 of twin-mounted 30mm guns, then 6 by 4 so, yeah, 6x4 30mm, so 6 quad mounted 30mm guns. Then 8x2 55mm guns. And then the 128mm secondaries are dual purpose. Uh, her maneuverability, this is where we have a pretty big step down from the Hindenburg. Now, Hindenburg, I mean, if you build onto it, she's a pretty maneuverable ship. But the close of its here is just. Uh, no. It's just. I'd say it's like driving a boat, but that would be a compliment to that phrase. She's very maneuverable. I did put the engine acceleration mod on here to try and help with that a little bit. And yeah, I mean, with, with the engine acceleration mod, it's a little bit better, but it, it, it's a chore to sail this ship around. And again, with the Hindenburg, that is a, a step down from that. But I mean, like, it's not terrible. It's just, it's not good. It is not good. Because some with a module and commander, you have 12.8 kilometer concealment there. Now for her box O gimmicks, she gets a heal, 377 HP gets her sword per second, second for 28 seconds, and reloads in 76 seconds. You get your choice of fighter or spotter. The spotter lasts for 100 seconds, gives you a 20% boost to your range. The choice of hydro or DFAA. Standard German hydro, 6 kilometer uh, range. So again, standard German, get up there. So, this is literally just slightly bigger Hindenburg. And if you're going to do super ships, this is how they should be. Just slightly more advanced, slightly larger, slightly better versions of their tier 10 counterparts. And by the way, there's no type of gimmick here with the Klausvitz. There's no firing structures. There's no auto loader. It's just a bigger Hindenburg. So you don't have this gimmick that is just outright broken on the... Well, 
I won't say on the Annapolis it's outright broken. It's a little bit much on the Annapolis, but on the Conde it's absolutely ridiculous. So there's none of that here. It's just a ship with a certain set of stats, certain characteristics, and in my opinion, that's how these ships need to be going forward. Now, unfortunately, this does make it the most, like, lackluster super ship. Because, again, it doesn't have the gimmick, you know, like, like the Satsuma. You get the 30% boost to your dispersion. The Hanover, you get your sectors out to 14 kilometers. The Annapolis and the Conde have the auto loaders. You don't have any of that here. So, while a good ship, in my mind, and a good solid design, it is the worst, technically, super, uh, su super ship. Because it doesn't get that. So, yeah, that's the unfortunate truth. Now, I hope going forward, maybe they introduce more and more ships like this, where they are just kind of, you know, beefed up designs of the tier 10, and ones that are more comfortable to play against, where, you know, you don't have to worry about getting auto-loaded from across the map by a Conde with its AP. Like, that was a terrible season in clan battles, because that, that, that would happen so much. So, yeah, hopefully they, they go forward doing this. It, well, copying this type of, of style with the super ships, I think it would make for a much more enjoyable time playing against them. But as of right now, pretty much every super ship that has come out it does have some type of gimmick. And now even the Pan American light cruisers are getting this as well, which I think is pretty dumb. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about the class fits in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. What are we doing? 45,000 subs, thanks to you guys. We guys have a wonderful Tuesday, wonderful rest of your week. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.